This weekend's trip had me thinking, who's this laptop really for? Well, dear computer science students and software engineering graduates, this year's the Summit Evo E13, a laptop that I think would be of interest to some of you. As someone that spent four years completing a bachelor's in computer science, I noticed a lot of people rocking two-in-one laptops. This weekend made me realize that all of those two-in-one devices I saw in class might be worth taking a look at. And let me tell you, I think writing on these devices for school definitely helps keeping things in one place. So people of the internet, today I want to welcome you to this review in order to add one more potential laptop candidate to your purchase list. And because I'm reviewing an engineering sample, I recommend doing some further research before purchasing this device. Now MSI have fabricated this 2-in-1 laptop with the help of a famous Italian designer, Alessandro Mendini, which is pretty cool since right now these come with a limited edition corkscrew. This Intel Evo certified laptop includes an 11th gen CPU relying on integrated Iris XE graphics which can be paired up with a maximum of 32GB of RAM which seem to be unupgradable because of its location, but it delivers a single M.2 SSD slot for fast storage use. It all comes together in this ink black chassis which was CNC manufactured and weighs around 2.98 pounds. It has some sweet corners, a very nice copper trim and an awesome variety of ports for most students which does include a couple of Thunderbolt 4 ports, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, a micro SD card input which sits in between a 3.5mm headphone jack and a 10 gigabit per second Type-C port. And all of this is great for us students but this 0.6 inch thin laptop truly feels complete when it is paired up with its Bluetooth pen. Now your canvas is a 13.4 inch display delivering a 360 degree flip screen with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio for productivity purposes. It has a 100% sRGB IPS panel which is great for color accuracy when dealing with some web dev work for example, but I do have to say the adaptive brightness is not as smooth as I would have liked it to be. And I first realized this in the car when I was on my way to the cottage. That being said, taking notes in class will feel super natural. The tracking feels great when writing with this pen on one note and the latency is very very minimal even when using the erasing feature and the select button. It almost feels like I'm using an iPad pen. You can also use the pen to give a PowerPoint presentation, call one notes from the desktop or if you rather use Microsoft's whiteboard you can do so as well. But don't worry you're not limited as these can be modified through the pen's software. Keep in mind this uses MPP 2.0 with 4096 different levels of pressure sensitivity. So you'll get that sweet pressure sensitivity feature and on top of that a peak to its battery life when in use. I do wish MS I would have added a magnetic charger like on the iPad, but if you want to charge your pen, you can use the USB-C cable that it came with. Although the hinges are pretty sturdy, I have to admit these become a bit looser towards the end of the fold, which also causes some shaking when writing on a mid-half fold. However, I do enjoy the fact the screen doesn't shake much when typing on this white backlit 83 keys keyboard violently. <laughs> I did spend the week in learning some SCSS, and for the time I've had this, I find the keyboard keys do feel so smooshy. They do have a good size with enough travel to them, I like the functionality layout and I enjoy the fact they are properly backlit, but I would love to see MSI giving some more sturdiness to the chassis itself. For developers, it definitely passes the vibe check, but you might have a love-hate relationship with these arrow keys. I personally like the fact I was able to page up and down super quickly because of where these were positioned, although I can see how some people would hate this. At the bottom, we have this slim silky glass multi-touch trackpad and I do wish it was larger in size because I find it a bit rough when dealing with windows precision gestures. But weirdly enough I really really like how easy it is when it comes to clicking on it. And no, do not worry, it's not loud. Oddly enough, I heard way too many trackpads in class. As part of the EVO standard, there is a fingerprint reader next to the trackpad when it comes to biometrics and also remarkable responsiveness when opening the lid and authenticating via facial recognition. And yes, I know, school from home sucks, but if you happen to need to jump on a lot of zoom calls, the 720p camera is honestly not bad at all, but it has a bit of a hard time with harsh exposure. I must say, it does manage exposure levels 
a bit better compared to my blade but the sharpness is not as good and it's also super awesome to see the noise cancellation feature this mic has to offer even when dealing with background noise to your calls another feature that this laptop has is that nahimic 3 really does boost the audio performance with the speakers placed at the bottom of the chassis i totally find these sound way better than my daily laptop Warning. What? Warning. What's going on? Voice for impact. What's going on, volume? Please return to the ship. No, no. For a couple of 2 watt speakers, these don't seem to produce bad distortions or terrible highs, although I remember most of us Kamsai students being on headphones most of the time, so these speakers might not be a priority for you. But I know what it is and we all know how embarrassing it can be to be the person with high full blast fans in class. The cooling piping is well laid out on this 4 core CPU which allowed MSI to tune these fans quite a lot, while doing any sort of work on VS Code or using OneNotes for taking notes. I honestly never heard the fans being and acting obnoxiously loud. Also, because I'm using an engineering sample, my battery life seems to be all over the place, but MSI claims to deliver 20 hours of use out of this huge 4 cell 70 watt hour light polymer battery. I personally got around 13 hours during my trip after editing some stories on Premiere, using Google Chrome, and working on VS Code. It does support fast charging, so if you're at school and you happen to run out of juice, you'll get up and running quickly. On top of this, I know for a fact campuses are currently working on using Wi-Fi 6 to improve the network when a bunch of devices are connected, which is super awesome since the Summit does have a Wi-Fi 6 adapter in it. And not to forget, you can now get rid of your camera sticker because this does come with a lock switch to kill the power for the webcam. You can also use the F6 key to provide that double assurance. Now my biggest issue at school was that I was using a macOS system, and because most universities and computer science careers curriculums are outdated, they seem to all contain Windows-based tutorials when it comes to installing the required tools, which made my last year of CompSci a lot easier since I was working from home with my custom PC. But because I was so used to a Unix-based system, I wanted my Windows machine to also feel like one by keeping Windows installed. And so with a laptop like this, for example, it is super easy to set up Windows subsystem for Linux. This is super useful when working intensively on web development projects and using Using things like Docker, SSH, JavaScript, and so on. I do have a tutorial on how to set this up, so make sure to check that out. Nevertheless, with these type of specs on any laptop, IntelliJ will run smoothly, and if you're doing some C++ work, you won't have to worry about it as well. And even docking it with the help of Thunderbolt 4 and my Cal Digit, I was able to pretty much use this as a desktop. Just know that the fans do kick in a bit but you'll get those sweet speeds and you'll benefit from charging your device, having extra IOs and connect to a monitor all with one single cable. Already though, things do start on a high note since the SSD MSI includes is really fast. However, the price point is what kills me the most. Even though MSI seem to have done great things with this laptop, my particular 2-in-1 unit comes at 1999 Canadian dollars, which is a lot of money especially when there are a lot of other competitors out there. If this laptop with this exact specs could come at $1,500 Canadian, it would be a no-brainer. It's almost like having a MacBook Air and an iPad 8th gen, but all in one. And if I had to nitpick on things, I would love to see a bit more sturdiness on the chassis, the ability to upgrade the RAM, and a possible power button on the side when using the tablet mode. Aside from this and the price point, I really like the laptop, and for the small amount of time I had it, it seems like such a good device to have as a student. But remember that hard specs don't tell the full story, and as a reviewer, it's always hard to cover all the key scenarios in such a small amount of time. Therefore, I always recommend doing your homework on any laptop review you watch. I just hope I was able to deliver the essentials with what I've experienced by using MSI's 2-in-1 laptop in the studio. Regardless, I strongly suggest you up your game at school with a 2-in-1 device, and I think this could be a great unit to have. People of the internet, if you enjoy my laptop reviews, let me know with a hashtag CompSci in the comment section down below. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye.